to last till end of May. So that's 12, 13 days to do this. Also, GS revises promotion process for staff. And Robert Skill Cop IGP visits crime scene. Really troubling story. At the back page, Assembly directs pedestrians to use Madina Dental Highway footbridge. The Chronicle has the cop story. Cop dies in bizarre robbery shootout. Mm. There is a picture of the cop on the front page. NDC Iron Lady vows to unseat Jogate. New voters register necessary. This is let my vote count. And there's a picture of David Asante mm. uh, on the front page. And I selected supplier because I thought I could trust him. Buffalo Bunny tells court this is the NCA case. Let's take you to the Daily Guide. And UT Beige bosses cases take shape. Now, the photo is of Prince Kofi Amwabi and Mike Nineku, and also Ghana Armed Force aircraft over Aran's apron. Uh, the other story is good news for locally refined gold, policeman killed by robbers, and NDC blows over 9 billion CDs on Kumasi Demo. Demo. Uh, the <laughs> new crusading guide. President Wu's UK investors. Ghana mm. is an ideal place for business. Mm. Dufour still on police radar mm. over Unibank saga. Bust to engage parliament over proposed adjustment of levy. The Daily Statesman has a few interesting stories. Dufour, father, son, and a Siama on the run. It's a oh. question on page two, uh, front page with page two as the details. Also, police pursue Unibank duo and ex governor over sector crisis. So that's the breakdown. Let my vote count. Let's respect EC's decision on voters register. That's what they're saying. And Air Force investigates cause of jet overrun. Now, on the front page of the business finder, take advantage of the Africa Continental Free Trade, AGI rallies businesses. Mm. On energy, six institutions to save over 2 million Ghana cities yearly. Mm -hmm. SEC leaves mutual fund, unit trust investors in limbo. Hmm. And there is more trust in the banking sector after reforms. This I, is I the want GC you to give me that story later. That is okay. the story. But let me give you a few more headlines. So this after story that you led with in mm -hmm. the Finder is also the lead in BNFT. Ride the wave of the after. AFDB President Adeshina urges UK investors. Also, NIC get tough on fake motor insurance as ITP backs rollout of motor insurance database. Then all set for GCB Bank's G-Mobile service launch and Vodafone nice. CEO joins Global Youth Academy survival board. Now, Godfrey is here with the stories from online. Yes, and I will start with citynewsroom.com mm. where the lead story is FX Development Committee highest point of political interference mm. according to Professor Gachi. Forgive. Who was <laughs> tensions? Man reports himself to police for killing resident. Mm. The Mankasim cop killer story is also here. Mm -hmm. Now, also in the whole West, uh, residents have attacked the district assembly after tax force yeah. allegedly kills really, a really resident. Gruesome, gruesome, yeah. gruesome. Uh, the killing was gruesome. Yeah. And, I'm, and I'm told there's a video circulating that's quite bad. Yes. Now, if you go to city business, mm. Ghana Standards Authority begs for help to trace importers and producers of substandard electrical products. Mm. That's one of the headlines here. Anna promises to provide 20 million day old checks, poultry farmers to Agric Ministry. Okay. Now I will take you to my joy online. Mm -hmm. Easy to start compiling new voters register on April 18 hmm. is here. Mm. Also, new voters register. Christian Council calls for calm. Hmm. My Manchester United has made the front page of <laughs> my joy online insipid, well. <laughs> no, the insipid man you please i am moving on from that headline. to defeat i am in half empty old trafford <laughs> i am moving on to a new headline. beautiful headline i will take you to nigeria okay uh channels tv.com a very good website yeah what are they saying they are saying that we will repatriate alison madweke to For face financial crime charges Home according to magu petroleum yes also on the front uh, onto the home page mm -hmm. of that site Seven billion dollars spent on player transfer in 2019. Globally, says, or globally, okay. says FIFA. Okay. If you go to the homepage of the East African, yeah, which is uh, yes, Kenyan, uh, Kenyan, Tanzania, Uganda, Uganda and other, other places. Yes. Also, uh, the let me, I'll give you that. Also, about but, members during a training session. I will let me just take you to BBC. Before but, you go down. Yes, virus hit Chinese city shuts public transport, and this is Lord Amwa's second hometown, Wuhan. Today is actually Lord Amwa's birthday. Yes. Mm. So Wuhan, what's happening? This virus thing. The, yes. the city is in lockdown. Yes, yeah. it's in it's in a temporary lockdown. All outbound transportation what, what are the chinese newspapers saying i i had the uh, i think the south china post yes you what? have you have the south china morning post what are they also saying? says that wuhan in lockdown as china tries to contain deadly coronavirus 
Mm. Hong Kong tightens coronavirus checks after patients showed only one symptom. So that one is there. Then let me take you to the U.S. finally. Yes. I'll give you two headlines from there, from the Washington Post and the Wall Street Journal. Okay. Now, the Washington Post goes big. As Democrats unfold their case, Trump and GOP, that's the Republican Party, mm -hmm. press ahead with okay. attacks. Okay. Now, when you go to the Wall Street Journal, they're also leading mm -hmm. with the coronavirus. They say that China locks down city at center of virus outbreak and Democrats make case for removing Trump from All right, office. Let me start with this story in the graphic. I think it's really serious. New voters register compilation. You see, I set a date mm -hmm. and the story is by Albert Salia. That story is also on some websites and it's yes. in other papers. It says the compilation of a new voters register for the 2020 elections will begin on April 18 this year. The Electoral Commission has confirmed. The commission has also expressed the hope that it will complete the exercise by May 30. 2020. A deputy chairperson of the EC in charge of operations, Mr. Samuel Tete, who disclosed this in an interview with the Daily Graphic, said the commission intended to mount a voters register exhibition from August 15 to August 28, 2020. So they, they, they start the registration April 18 and end of May. Uh, so that's actually more than 12 days. Uh, yes, so that's actually 30 plus 12 days, yeah. 42 days. Then they would open the registration, uh, uh, the database for exhibition, mm -hmm. August 15 to 20. That's two weeks for mm -hmm. people to check and make sure everything is okay. Now, he was given this of the ESIS calendar of activity. He said it will deploy 8,000 registration devices to cover 32,000 polling stations across the country. They would use the cluster system for the registration, where four polling stations would form a cluster. Now, although the ESIS intended to spend 10 days at each cluster, mindful of the fact that the voting population in some polling stations was high. It might exceed the it might exceed the days at some polling stations to ensure that all eligible voters were registered. And he said after the 43 day registration period, the EC would provide a five day mopping up period to take care of the exigencies. We'll get into the details of this yeah. when we do the main show. But the suggestion for the EC, since they are doing an improved uh, biometric voter register, they should also have an improved system. For example, there should be an online platform or a US SSD system where after registration I can check my details instead of going to join long queues like yeah. others are so doing. Like, it is, in fact, it is one of the things we'll be looking out for. For example, SNIT, if you finish registration, yes. you can do uh, USSD on your yes, phone yes. and know your details. This time, we don't want to join any queues to check details. Brilliant. Now, is now there let me just, easy story? There's an angle mm -hmm. on this on City Newsroom. New register. Nothing will stand in easy way. Let my vote count alliance. Yes. I haven't heard from them in a while. They started speaking yesterday. The Let My Vote Count Alliance says nothing mm. can obstruct the Electoral Commission from compiling a new voters register for this year's general elections. Convener of the group David Asante, who spoke at a news conference in Kumasi, called on Ghanaians to stand up and support the electoral management body's decision to compile a new register. Mm. We appreciate the finality brought to the issue of the voters register by the EC. Do not be swayed by the purported resistance of the NDC towards the registration exercise. While they openly reject the new voters register, they will mobilize their supporters to register. We are going to throw our weight and support behind the EC. It's a done deal. No turning back. All right. Now, could you, the yes. other story. Let me take you to the banking sector. Yes. Because those in the mutual fund area are not happy. At all. Now, business finder page five. SEC leaves mutual fund unit trust investors in limbo. Now, Raji Pawani writes for the finder that the fate of investors of some 18 mutual funds and units trust that were shut down by the um, F -E -S SEC mm -hmm. um, in November 2019 is hanging in the balance. Customers of these mutual funds and units trusts have been left stranded since the regulator shut down the FMCs that run them. Some of these customers who spoke to this paper expressed their frustration with the turn of events. Um, one um, customer of First Bank Financial Services, Stephen Asari, says that his money has been locked up there for about six months. That was before the SEC closed the company. Mm. Now, they always tell him stories when he goes for redemption. But when the SEC came in, he thought everything would be fine and he would get his money. But now the door of First Bank is locked and he doesn't know who to talk to. Mm. Indeed, when Business Finder visited the premises of First Bank Financial Services on two occasions at their World Trade Center and airport branches all in Accra, scores of aggrieved customers could be seen around with the doors of the company locked. And the customers who spoke to the business finder says now they don't know who to turn to and they are losing faith in the system. Why will the SEC close the company if they know they won't help us but make us stranded this way? This One is, of them asked. Th this, is, this is serious. So yeah. the companies that were closed down are 53 yeah. and now the fund managers and mm -hmm. a few of the customers have expressed frustration. Now let me give you the banking angle. The daily guide and the statesman both have that. So daily guide is talking about UT Beach. Statesman is talking about Unibank. Yeah. Now, Daily Guy says UT Beige bosses 
case or cases take shape and then uh, Jibril Abdul Razak reports that the prosecution has been given two weeks to file all the documents it intends to use as evidence for the respective trials of chief executive officers of insolvent UT Bank and the Beige Group. The two CEOs, Prince Kofi Amabing of the defunct UT Bank and his counterpart Mike Ninaku of TBG, are standing trials separately for allegedly stealing money belonging to their customers. The circuit court, uh, presided over by Emmanuel Sando, and, and are both facing charges of stealing money laundering with separate dockets. When both cases were called yesterday, the prosecution led by ASP Manon Nyamiche pleaded with the court to give them time to furnish the accused persons and their lawyers with the prosecution documents as the court case states. Then the, the story then gives you the details of what the state accuses each gentleman of. Now, for, for example, UT was, uh, ac- is accused to have engaged in what is called off-balance sheet transactions uh, log issuing investment certificates to investors in the name of the bank in very high amounts and then other things on the on the other hand the beige uh, case has to do with 340 million cities which was allegedly stolen from the group together with some eight other persons and then the investigation details are given in the story then if you go to the statesman okay. they're also saying that the information they've gleaned shows that the ghana police service is on a nationwide manhunt for the founder of defunct unibank dr kwabna dufour senior former chief executive of the bank, Kwabna Dufour Jr., and the former deputy governor of the bank, John Sinesiyama. The story says both Dr. Dufour, uh, uh, the former governor of the Bank of Ghana and finance minister in the government of the NDC, are said to have their eyes fixed for the running mid slot of the... Uh, it says both Isiyama and Dr. Dufour are said to have their eyes fixed on the running mid slot for the NDC. So the paper then talks about other things. The crusading guide actually How they says snapped that. an invite, mm-hmm. supposedly, and uh, other issues that uh, have emerged, including Dr. Dufour going to court to seek an interlocutory injunction to restrain the police from what he describes as unlawful threats and harassment following his invitation by the special investigative team. And then one Simon Animle, who's uh, um, counsel for the embattled minister, wrote back to the team drawing members' attention to the fact that his client seat to the director of Unibank as long ago as 2009. So the point is that there are lots of things going on and this paper is claiming there are all kinds of underhand dealings. Okay. Same claim in the New Crusading Guide and they say that a visit to the residence of each of the three persons reveals a significant presence of police officers largely in plain clothing waiting to undertake the arrest following their alleged refusal to cooperate with the police. Let me give you two stories related to finance and money, Bernard. Now, if you go to page 39 of the Daily Graphic, GATT takes 18% of ADB, mm. shores up bank's capital to 700 million Ghana cities. Mm. So it's a story written by Maxo Akalari Adombila. Mm. The Ghana Amalgamated Trust Limited now owns 18% of the Agricultural Development Bank Limited. It followed the successful injection of 127 million Ghana cities into the agriculture-focused lender by GATT, a special-purpose vehicle that the government established in 2018 to help capitalize, restructure, and boost growth in five undercapitalized but well-managed indigenous banks. Hmm. Now, according to details of the story, although the GATT arrangement allows the trust to make changes to the board and management should they so desire, the uh, the ADBMD, Mr. John Kofi Mensah, said the bank was able to get the SPV to waive those rights. Now, on the f- homepage of City Business, of mm-hmm. City Newsroom, mm-hmm. we have FX Development Committee, highest point of political interference. Uh, that is from Professor Gachi. Mm-hmm. Professor John Kachi, the Dean of the School of Business at the University of Cape Coast, has continued his criticism of the FX Development Committee, saying it amounts to the highest point of political interference. He had argued in an earlier piece he wrote that the committee was usurping the powers of the Bank of Ghana and called for the need to protect institutions established by the Constitution. Abenad, you were speaking on your show, the point of view. Yes. And quote, one line says, so if a political entity can come out and take over the work of the Bank of Ghana, that is the highest point of political interference that we should not encourage. Now, there are two very big stories on killing. One is from Cape Coast, robbers killing a cop, and the other is from Jolo. Yeah. in the Volta region near Ho. Let me give you the police one in Cape Coast and then I'll take you to the whole one. Shelly, I said we had a report for the graphic that the IGP, James Opombuenu, has placed a 10,000 city bounty on the head of anyone who volunteer information leading to the arrest of persons who shot and killed a policeman in the central region yesterday. Around 4.30 a.m. yesterday, the lifeless body of Lance Corporal Kingsley Kofi Bwain was found about 200 meters away from the Zen filling station on the Makesim Asimfosu Road where a robbery incident had taken place about 2 a.m. 
A statement signed by the Central Regional Police Public Affairs Officer DSP Irene Sewalpong said when a police patrol team arrived at the Zen Police Station in the Mansman, in Fansman Municipality in response to a distress call after a robbery, the robbers opened fire on the team, injuring two policemen. He said at about 4.30 a.m. the same day, the body of the deceased policeman, who was not on duty and was in civilian clothing, was found with gunshot wounds about 200 meters from the robbery scene. Investigations are going on to establish the facts of the events leading to the death and the injury. Now, now, if you go to Ho, mm -hmm. some no, rampaging no, use... Then before you go, mm -hmm. let me just give you an update. The IGP um, has also been there. Yes, yeah. yes. That's actually in the later part of the story. So the IGP uh, visited the place. He... Um, he visited Mankesi to assess the situation at first and, and also commiserated with the bereaved family during the announced, uh, uh, during which announced the bounty. He visited the injured at the Our Lady of Mercy Hospital in Mankesi and said a team of investigators from Accra had joined the team in the central region to help apprehend the perpetrators. Now, in Ho, some rampaging youth of the Jolo, Bogami, Bogame. Yeah, Bogame mm -hmm. area yesterday attacked the whole West District Assembly offices because the Assembly's vehicle had knocked down and killed a resident of the area. Yeah. In the heated reprisal attack, they chased away the DCE and the entire staff and set one of the assembly's vehicles ablaze. Now, as if that was not enough, the yeah. Irish youth smashed one of the vehicles of the Ghana News Agency, which had newsmen aboard. But for sheer luck, all the journalists in the vehicle would have been lynched for taking pictures at the scene. <clears throat> now, the deceased was said to have tried to collect his key from the revenue officer who had locked his shop. In the process, the driver of the assembly's vehicle, in an attempt to move the vehicle backwards, knocked down, drove over, and killed him instantly. And apparently, the amount of money was 20 CDs. So apparently, he owed 25 CDs, and he said he would pay 20 CDs. Mm. And for the five CDs, this altercation led to his death. And if you go to citynewsgroup.com, there's an update on this person that you just spoke about. Mm -hmm. It says that Ho West Tensions man reports himself to police for killing yeah. resident. The individual believed to be responsible for the death of a, of a resident at Jologbogame in Ho West District of the Volta region has reported himself to the police. Speaking to Eyewitness News, the public relations officer of the Volta region police command, Corporal Prince Dogbache, hmm. revealed that the individual who is yet to be named is currently assisting with investigations. Now, Bernard, let me take you uh, to the back page of the daily graphics since we are dealing with assembly issues. Mm -hmm. Assembly... No, I, I, okay, before that, I wanted you to talk about the Ghana aircraft. Okay. Ghana Air aircraft is on the front page of some papers. Yes, it's yes. in the Ghanaian Times on yes. um, page 18. It, it, it didn't get that much attention, but I yeah. think it's an important story. Now, the story says a preliminary investigation team has been constituted to investigate the cause of the overrun of a Ghana Air Force aircraft Casa C-295 on the apron of the Air Force base in Accra on mm. Wednesday morning. They are to come out with their report within 48 hours, the, P the Public Relations Directorate of the Ghana Armed Forces said in a statement. There was no casualty to any crew member and anybody, it said, while there was also no passengers on board the aircraft with registration number GHF-552. The statement signed by Colonel Eric Agrikwashi, the Director of Public Relations, said the manufacturers of the aircraft, Airbus, had been notified of the incident, which occurred during a routine engine run at 11.10 a.m. Okay, right. let me then take you to Medina. Medina. Footbridge. Yes, the footbridge story. Assembly directs pedestrians to use Medina Adentan Highway footbridge. This is the back page of the Daily Graphic. The Medina Lankwantana Municipal Assembly, in collaboration with the Medina Police, have stepped up efforts to compel pedestrians to use the footbridges on the Medina Adentan Highway. Currently, the Assembly has deployed staff at various vantage points and to direct and sometimes force pedestrians to use their bridges instead of crossing the roads at points that are dangerous to their safety. Five out of the six footbridges on the stretch have been completed and opened for public use. When the Daily Graphic team visited, it was observed that people were using the bridges at the West Africa Senior High School, the SDA Junction, the EP Church, while the pedestrians barely used the bridge at Redco. Though the use of the bridge had also improved at the Zongo Junction, most pedestrians preferred to use the crossing at the intersection instead of the bridge, a situation which has forced the assembly to deploy the guards. Now, if you want to check the assemblies doing well, you need to check pages 10 and 11 of the Ghanaian Times because the Office uh, of the Head of Local Government Service has published the assessment of assemblies for the year 2018 based on their performance contract. And Asokore Mampo Municipal got a 100% rating okay. ah. and placed first. 
Now, the 216th Assembly is North Gonja. They got 43.81%. Um, in fact, in the this morning, mm -hmm. later today, throughout the country, there would be a uh, swearing in of Assembly members who yeah. were voted for a few weeks ago in the local elections. And so if you have time, go and inspect, go and find out who's your Assemblyman, who's your unit committee member, take their phone number, speak to them about community development. Mm -hmm. This is how change starts. Yeah. So let's be part of this, the process from now. It's not just voting and going to sleep. Now you need to know who's your unit committee member, who's your assembly member. You need to know what times they have meetings and then you can go and make a case. Go for it. Let's go back online. Let I want some, let some take, international stories. Yes, I'm taking you to China now to mm. deal with coronavirus. And mm. just an update that has come through from the South China Morning Post. Mm -hmm. China coronavirus may have come from a snake, eh? researchers say. This just this story just came through. The novel coronavirus in China that has killed 17 people and infected hundreds more might have made its first jump to a human from a snake, mm. according to a group of Chinese scientists. While a Chinese professor in Germany has forecast that the epidemic will reach its peak in March. Mm. If the snake claim is substantiated, other researchers in China have challenged it. It would change the scientific world's understanding of the transmission and mutation of SARS, mm. of, of SARS-like pathogens, as it would be the first time a reptile had been found to be the reservoir. Now, in dealing with this as well, but a lot of countries... Yeah, so we understand that the whole moves. city is in lockdown. Yes, and on now, the BBC, yeah. Wuhan shuts public transport over outbreak. Wow, Wuhan, a, so no movement. Yes, mm -hmm. Wuhan, a Chinese city of 11 million people, has temporarily shut down its public transport as it tries to halt the outbreak of a new strain of virus. Those living in the city have been advised not to leave in a week when millions of Chinese are traveling for the upcoming Lunar New Year holiday. Mm. The respiratory illness has spread to other parts of China, with some cases in other countries, including the U.S. Bernard, Parliament wow. is resuming, and the advertorial is on page 7 of the Ghanaian Times. Mm. And I want to share the brothel with you. Okay. Yes, fourth session of Parliament, commencement instrument, uh, commencement instrument 2020. Mm -hmm. Know ye, all men, <laughs> oh. <laughs> in James Version. Yes. Know ye, all men, wow. that in exercise of the powers conferred on the Speaker by Clause 1 of Article 112 of the Constitution, mm -hmm. I, Joseph Oseusu, mm -hmm. first Deputy Speaker of Parliament, yeah. by this constitutional instrument, yeah. appoint Parliament House Accra yeah. to be the place and 10 o'clock in the forenoon of Tuesday, 28th <laughs> January 2020, yeah. to be the time. At really? which the fourth session of the seventh parliament of the fourth republic shall commence. Yeah. Given under my hand this 14th day of January 2020. Is that how in they the write? the office of the speaker. Is that how they write? Ceremonial me. language. No, all men. Ceremonial language. Bernard. <laughs> wow. <laughs> like it. Well, Bernard, I'm staying international for you. Yes. Interesting story coming in from Zimbabwe, Bernard. What's going on? Billionaire pays Zimbabwe doctors to return to work. Yes. That's what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Zimbabwe's junior doctors yeah, have man. agreed to return to work, ending a strike that has lasted for over four months mm. after they accepted an offer from a Zimbabwean telecoms billionaire. Wow. The strike was one of the longest in the country's history and brought the public health care system to its Is that Strive? Yes. UK-based Strive Masiwa will pay each doctor a subsistence allowance of $300. Thank you. And provide them with transport to work through a fund he has set up. Most of the doctors on strike were earning less than $100 a Sorry. month. The billionaire will fund the doctors for six months yeah. and it's not clear what will happen after that. That's my kind That's of a good man. move. Let's challenge. No, 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 I hope you are taking notes. We don't have, we don't have this kind of rich men here. Oh, we would, I'm sure <laughs> know ye, all rich men of Ghana. <laughs> this is the City Breakfast Show. The city's biggest conversation.